We reside on the fringes of paradise. A surprising scientific discovery revealed we are drawn to something unknown. The Big Bang, an event that birthed the universe, took place 13.7 billion years ago, but pinpointing where it occurred is not straightforward. We can identify a spot in the cosmos and gauge our distance from the origin. Astrophysicist and science communicator Ethan Siegel pondered the question and explained why scientists often avoid it. Interestingly, we are nearly at the very heart of creation and it's quite an odd thought, isn't it? Traveling grains of sand. An explanation is a familiar concept. Shrapnel flies outward. If one were to mentally reverse this process, the pieces would converge back to a single point, the epicenter. In the 1930s, astronomers observed that all galaxies appeared to be receding from us. Intriguingly, the more distant the galaxy, the faster its retreat. This raises a peculiar question. What is so repulsive about us? However, if you adopt the perspective of a shrapnel piece, you perceive yourself as stationary, the center of the universe and the coordinate origin. And from this vantage point, all other pieces seem to be moving away from you. And indeed, as astronomers noted, the more distant the piece, the quicker its departure. This observation provides the answer. It appears as though we are at the epicenter with everything fleeing from us, yet each fragment perceives the same phenomenon. Drawn to the unknown, upon closer examination, it becomes apparent that galaxies are receding from us slightly faster in one direction and slower in the other. This discrepancy seems to be the clue. However, its key, this key is metaphorically rusty and does not often fit the lock. Returning to the concept of an explosion, one might notice in videos of such events that clouds of fire often burst from the epicenter each spreading uniquely. Similarly, the Big Bang was not uniformly homogeneous. Our galaxy is evidently being pushed by something immense, and this was first detected in 1973. And by 1986, the Great, Great Attractor was identified. Located 250 million light years away, it holds a mass equivalent to 10 raised to the 16th power of our sun's mass. The numbers are so vast that terms like quadrillion or sextillions are inadequate to quantify them. Should we observe this immense entity to which we're drawn? Yet we cannot, as it is veiled by cosmic dust within the disk of our galaxy. What we have discovered is a vast cluster of galaxies. However, it's not the source of the pull. The attractor draws our galaxy, a group that includes our own, and a megagroup compromising approximately 100,000 galaxies known as Lanieka. Thus we drift away from the Big Bang's epicenter, gravitating slowly towards the enigmatic Great Attractor. Everything is so vast and magnificent, while we are so minute. Is it possible that there is no singular coordinate system? that could anchor us and help determine the Big Bang's original location. Pigeons to the rescue. An explosion encompasses more than just debris, it includes light as well. In 1948, astronomer George Gamow observed that the Big Bang's light had not disappeared, but had merely weakened over time. Gamow's findings initially received little attention, and it was only later that other theorists arrived at similar conclusions, and some observers noted anomalies without realizing their significance. In 1965, Arnaud Penzias and Robert Wilson were adjusting a malfunctioning radio telescope that persistently emitted a hissing sound. Initially, they blamed pigeons that had soiled the antenna, yet even after the thorough cleaning, the noise persisted. Eventually, it was discovered that the noise was a light from the Big Bang. Over billions of years, it had diminished and in accordance with quantum mechanics, had lost energy transmitting into the radio wave spectrum, where even today it can be detected by hobbyists. 
Initially, the uniform hissing noise was maddening, but after satellites were launched and measuring measurements taken, it was confirmed that we are indeed moving from the primordial light of the Aquarius constellation towards that of Leo. Interestingly, both constellations are zodiacal, meaning our trajectory aligns for some reason with Earth's orbital plane. Fragments can scatter in various directions or be drawn to one another, similar to our attraction to the great attractor. Light serves as a sought after coordinate system. Thus, when all is considered, the Big Bang's epicenter appears remarkably near, nearly 17 million light years away. This distance placed it beyond our galaxy, yet it remains within reach of the nearby galaxies visible to the naked eye on a clear night, even without a telescope, captured with just a simple camera, it's indeed very close. Our habitat zone is distinct and des designated. We reside near the inception of all beginnings. Considering the universe's current diameter is approximately 100 billion light years, and if we hypothesize that the biblical Eden, where Adam and Eve originated, was in today's Iraq and Mesopotamia, then we are merely five kilometers from Eden and in an adjacent village. It's a mere hour's walk away. Such a revelation. Did astronomers know yet conceal it? Why would Ethan Siegel, who spotted a peculiar hat in his social media avatar, clearly indicated desperation? disclose this. The truth is, it's both so and not quite so. Everywhere and nowhere. When we envision the Big Bang, we often mistakenly picture a conventional explosion occurring in pre-existing space. We might ask, where did it happen? Over, over on that hill? As if we're landscape already present. But the reality is that the Big Bang did not occur within space. There was no space at all. It both created and continued to create space, expanding into nothingness. This realization fundamentally alters our understanding. Consider the universe just a microsecond after the Big Bang, when it was barely larger than an atomic nucleus. Imagine a fragment of matter from which our galaxy will later form, addressing a neighboring fragment destined to become another galaxy. Wow, we're practically neighbors. Not just beside me, but directly beneath me, concurs your neighbor. And indeed, we are all neighbors, for the universe, as we call, is minuscule. So, thus you depart, and once neighbors now so distant that not even light could bridge the gap, rendering each other invisible. You sit by the hearth, surrounded by grandchildren, recounting, it was an intense affair, there was only void darkness, and then suddenly right beside me. Similarly, a galaxy at the universe's far end narrates to its own grandchildren the very same tale. For it too, everything was close by, it was also the chosen one, and here we are all the chosen, and for the common person it's daunting to comprehend. What does this simple narrative imply? That in the universe there are no favorites, and the center lies everywhere, that across the globe the same natural law applies. This implies, yes, it appears that paradise is just within reach. It's even visible, but the, this vision is shared by all, and perhaps paradise is but an illusion, or conversely, the very essence that bestows its be blessings upon us all. And this is on Solask. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.